New in FL Studio 21 is the Luxor Verb with a great feedback pitch shifting effect and a fantastic envelope where you can make a ducking of your signal. So I love it. My name is Thomas Foster and in this video I explain you everything you need to know to understand how to use the Luxor Verb of FL Studio 21. Alright, the most important thing here is the dry wet signal. So this is the incoming dry signal and this is the effect and you can define how loud the effect is. Let's listen to some vocals of my last production. Boy, you play too many games. You play them hard you couldn't restrain. And for sure, like in every plug-in of uh, FL Studio, you have this presets. Um, the normal uh, Weaver please, uh, presets you find here where it says Hall, Bright Hall. Boy, you play too many games. Or let's go to Diffuse Small Hall. Boy, you play too many games. Or maybe here is useful the vocal hall one. Boy, you play too many games. You can use this arrows here to go to the next point in the menu, like the vocal hall two. Boy, you play too many games. Okay, let's go back to default. Let's take a look to the sections. We have here the input section uh, with a filter. We have the reverb section. We have the feedback uh, section with the pitch shifting. We have the output section, including beside the levels, a filter and a stereo width. And we have the envelope to say uh, how we want to duck the signal. Okay. Um, let's start with the reverb. The decay time is the uh, how long it needs to go to minus 60 dBs. So basically until you don't hear it anymore. So let's make uh, four, uh, five seconds. Bye. Let's make it small like uh, 0.6 seconds. Bye. Or very long like 15 seconds. Bye. You Okay, we go back to five. Brightness here we have the how much high frequencies do we hear? Boy, you play too many games. You play them all. The size of the room, the room can be very small Boy. or very big. Boy, you play too many. Diffusion. Boy, you play too many games. Uh, the more size we have, the better we hear what diffusion is doing. Boy. Boy. Character, if we give the character uh, uh, up, we have something like a wave that makes the signal louder and... Boy. You, 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 you hear that, right? Without character, this is gone. Boy. Okay, then we have the pre-delay, so when does the signal of the reverb start? After a half second, 500 milliseconds. For sure you also can make this in time, 4 to 0 is a quarter. So depending on the tempo you have set in FL Studio. Um, we have uh, some kind of modulation, um, maybe we hear this better with some kind of synthesizer. Make it faster. Now you hear it. And we have here, we can freeze the signal. Sustain is basically the same, but the signal can still change and continue to get more uh, to change. Yeah, let's listen to this. All right. Um, high quality ne needs a little bit more CPU, but sounds better. So if you have a good PC, I would turn this on. Uh, here in the input section, we can uh, say how loud is the incoming signal that is going to the reverb. If this is uh, red here, that what is in the moment white, 
uh, if this is getting wet, then uh, it should not make distortion because there is a limiter inside. But then you should go down a little bit here. Boy, you play too many games. You play them hard because you couldn't restrain. We have here a little filter at the input that is going to the reverb. So let's cut the high frequencies at 1000. Boy, you play too many games. Or let's cut the low frequencies at 1000. Boy. Hertz, right? One kilohertz. Uh, one more time. Boy, you play too many games. Uh, if it should sound natural, a little bit of filtering is always good, like this, 515,000. Boy, you play too many games. Or 10,000, yeah. Okay, now let's come to the feedback. Uh, like the reverb, you can turn it on here or off. You can turn the feedback on here. Boy. Boy. And let's turn on the uh, up the gain. Boy. Boy. A little bit louder. Boy. Boy. We can pitch shift it down. Boy. Um, this was an octave, minus 12 is an octave, or plus 12. Uh, let's go to plus 1, or 2, 2 is cool. Boy, you play too many games. That's the, how long is the delay? 500 milliseconds, half second. Boy, you play too many games. You play them hard. Makes a nice effect if you go to plus 12 and mix it a little bit to the reverb. Here at the end, this high frequencies. Boy, you play too many games. I like this very much. It's pretty cool. Um, we have here a little filter. So let's go to 1000 and the gain we make plus 10. Boy. You hear it. Let's uh, change it a little bit. You also can see it here in the spectralizer. Boy, you play too many games. Boy, you play too many games. Um, we can make the cool, so how bright is it? Boy, you play too many games. You play them all, but you couldn't restrain. Oh. Okay. Let's go back to zero here. Here can say how much width do we have? How bright is the stereo? So this is mono. This is normal, no changes. 1.0, right? And you can go up until 2.0, but be careful as this is not mono compatible. So if you want a normal signal, I would maximum go up to 1.5 or something like this. Okay. Let's come to the fun part. I mean, the feedback is already a little bit fun part, but the main fun part is here, this envelope. And I realized this um, the first time on the David Gather track when he had a lead synth <laughs> with so much reverb. But if you have normally too much reverb, then um, it's too far away, then it does not sound good. So we want to make the reverb, the, the synth, as big as possible, or the vocal, but we don't want to be in the middle of the reverb so you don't hear the dry signal. And that's what we can do with the envelope. So basically we say, um, let's place the threshold, the orange line here. Uh, here. So always the synthesizer is playing, what we see with the blue line, it's going over the threshold that is the orange line. And now we can say what do we want to do when the, uh, the signal is higher than the threshold. We want to bring down the volume. Hear the difference? Without, um, everything is like sausage. With the wet effect, we have a dry signal and then it, after the signal comes the reverb. 
So how fast does it come? We have here attack and decay. In this case, it would be the decay uh, if the signal is going back f uh, under the threshold. How fast is the reverb coming? This is the decay. Let's bring it down. A little bit more. Much more. So in this case, something like 200 could be cool. Pretty cool. And there is another effect that we can make. Um, because at the moment, we say if the signal is higher than the orange line, than the threshold, then bring down the volume. But why don't we push it mm, for this? Um. So in this case, uh, we bring down the volume and scale it up. So we hear the uh, reverb just while we are playing and then it's gone. And that's a kind of gated reverb. And uh, to hear this, uh, why don't we load some drums? Pretty cool, huh? Um, so, one more time for your understanding. Here you can turn it off or say, please make this effect with the wet signal or with the decay signal. Here you set the threshold, that's the orange line. With the scale, you can make it louder while it's on top of the threshold or make it softer. Uh, you can filter the sidechain signal so the signal that is uh, changing the uh, coming into the threshold, you can give the signal an offset, minus or plus. Uh, you can use a side chain, some buses of of FL Studio. Uh, we already talked about attack and decay, where you can make it slow the attack or the decay or fast, and you can make the whole signal smoother. Uh, here you can turn on the peaks of your graphic or the spectrum analyzer, or both at the same time. So this is pretty cool. Maybe let's wrap it up. We have here the input with a little filter for the high for high cutting and low cutting. We have here the reverb section where we can set the most important the decay time. And we have here the feedback section where we can pitch shift the signal. Um, we have here the output where we can use this peak EQ to change the character. Uh, and the most important, we can set how loud is the reverb. And we can use the envelope. If we go to off, there is no envelope. But if we turn it on, we can push or bring down the signal when it's on top of the threshold. So please write me in the comments if this tutorial was helpful for you. And um, if you want to see more on FL Studio 21, then come to my YouTube channel, Thomas Foster Music Production. I made tons of videos for FL Studio 21 and I will start these days a complete beginner tutorial to understand how FL Studio is working. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers. We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugent Player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. 
This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugen, to make music.